You did not follow the advice of this channel and you found yourself installing Windows 11 or you just bought yourself a new laptop or computer and it came with Windows 11 and the first thing you noticed is that it's not Windows 10. Well, we have a fix to make Windows 11 work a lot more like what you're used to with Windows 10 and fixes a lot of the problems that people have already been complaining about on Windows 11. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Before we get too far in this video, I would really appreciate it if you click the thumbs up button down below and even consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out a lot. With that out of the way, let's talk about Windows 11. Now, Windows 11 introduced a lot of new features and a new style to the way that we use our favorite operating system. That is a good thing and a bad thing. Some people are resistant to change. Some people just don't like the new Windows 11 UI. And it might have you reaching for the uninstall button or the time machine to go back to Windows 10. Time travel! Before you consider going back to Windows 10, maybe there's a way that we can fix it. There's a new software out that is absolutely totally free. It doesn't cost you anything to install it. It doesn't cost you anything to unlock features. It is fully featured right from the start. I know there's a lot of other products out there that charge a lot of money to try to get some of these features back. And it, it's just, who wants to pay to get something that you're used to? Nobody, nobody wants to. So we're gonna use this new software. It is called Explorer Patcher. It is a very lightweight program that has been written in the user community. This one was released by user Valinet on his GitHub. Now he does have a website where he kind of talks about and everything, and I will link that in the description down below. I will also put a link directly to the GitHub. But today I wanna to walk you through exactly where to find it, how to download it, how to install it, and then the initial setup to change the things that I like to change to fix my Windows 11. But you're probably wondering, well, how bad is Windows 11? Before we go into what we're gonna make Windows 11 look like once we revert it to Windows 10, I wanna show you what it looks like right now in case you haven't seen it yet or in case you're not sure what I'm talking about. So here is what Windows 11 looks like. This is the default install. It's got the center aligned start menu with all of your shortcuts and everything here. First of all, this makes it feel a lot more like an iOS device or a Macintosh. And I think that's what Microsoft was going for. They really wanna blur the lines between a Mac user and a Windows user. You know, I understand where they're coming from with that, but I don't know if I'd ever get used to this. For a Mac user, this is easy, this makes sense. So you can see you press start, and it just pops up this main menu now. This doesn't look like your regular start button. You have to push this, all apps, and then that makes it look more like your regular start button, but it's still not quite the same. The biggest thing for me that I really hate is the fact that all of my shortcuts are grouped together and there's no option. So here, I'll open up a couple Chrome browsers like that. Now, if they're all minimized like that, it looks like just one Chrome browser. And then if you mouse over it, it expands it out. And then I can see that there's three or four tabs of, of Chrome browser. I don't like that. When I'm doing productivity work, I like to see them along the bottom. I can just go to the one I want and click it. It slows things down for me and I don't care about keeping it neat and tidy. So the option to never combine is not here anymore. And I can show you. So if I go to taskbar settings and I go down here, it, it's not here anywhere. There's no ability to move, like it doesn't even give me the option. Now, what you may have noticed is that I do have the option to align to the left, which is, you know, that's wonderful that I can align it to the left, but you still get this crappy start menu. So the two biggest things for me, the start menu, I want my old start button back and I want to be able to never combine my apps. Those are the two things that I wanna get out of this. So as with anything, before you go making any real changes to your computer, you're gonna to wanna to create a restore point. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. So to create a restore point, there's two ways to do it. If you have the spyglass here where you can just click that, then you can type restore point and you'll see create a restore point. If you do not, for whatever reason, have the spyglass, you can press the Windows button 
and the X button, it will pull up this here and then you want to go to search and it'll pull up the exact same search and then we're going to type restore. We're going to create a restore point. So we want to create it for our, our C drive. So you're going to select C drive and then you're going to say OK. In my case, I've never actually created a restore point for this. So protection is currently listed as off. We need to turn that on. So we're going to go configure and then we're going to say turn on system protection. And then you can set the number of the amount of usage that we want. And I don't know what's right. I'm going to say 83 gigabytes. I'm going to hit apply. It's going to think about things for a minute. Then I can click OK. Now I have for my C drive, I can go create and then you want to call this something that you will remember. So in my case, I'm going to say before I made system changes and create. Now it's going to create a restore point and it's going to save all of the settings on the computer. This might take a few minutes, but it's worthwhile in case you screw something up. Now, the software that we're going to be using is actually very safe to use. I've used it a number of times already and I will go through exactly how to set it up and I will show you how to reverse everything without uh, having any problems afterwards. So my restore point has been created successfully. So now I can click close. Now when you click the link to the GitHub, it's going to be a little bit scary at first because you're going to see all of this stuff. You're going to be like, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know how to work with any of this stuff. This is too scary. And then you're going to close it. You're going to walk away. I'm going to show you the easy way. OK, keep scrolling down until we get you'll see the feature summary. It'll talk to you all about it. Then it says download the latest version of the setup program. That's all we're going to do. We're going to click that. Now this will download epsetup.exe. It's a small program. It only takes a minute and then we're going to run it. So you're going to get a thing that says the Windows protected your PC. Now it's OK if you trust this guy. If you don't trust this guy and you don't trust me, then say don't run. Close this video. Close this browser. Walk away right now. If you trust this guy and if you trust me, then say run anyway. Uh, and then I'm going to say now you can't see this part. It says, do you want to allow this app to run from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? I'm going to say yes. And now it'll do the install. Now it only takes a second. Your taskbar will disappear and then it should come back when it's done. And there we go. My taskbar is back and immediately my settings have automatically changed. So you can see my start button went over here. So you can see my taskbar went to never combine. So now I've got all of my tabs here and I can pick the ones that I want. And I'm going to I know that I can close a lot of these because I don't actually want them. And I can slide these around and move them around. Normally I like my file browser over there. My OBS, which is uh, doing my screen recording. I mean, that's going to be over there and I can move all this stuff around. You'll also notice my start button has come back sort of. So it's moved it to the left, but it still looks like this. Now I need to go into the settings of this software. So to do that, click on a blank spot on your taskbar. So we're going to right click on here. We're going to go to properties. This will pull up the settings menu for Explorer Patcher. This gives you a lot of features that you can turn on and off. So it has default features that it just toggles automatically. There's probably more that you want to do. So for example, I'm going to go to the start menu. So I'm going to say position on screen at edge. Now I can say Windows style Windows 10. Now it should make the changes automatically. So there we go. So I don't have to apply anything. I don't have to do anything. It just automatically works. So as soon as I hit start, now I have a Windows 10 style start bar. So I've got my all apps. I've got my productivity apps all here and you can rearrange them however you want, just like you're used to. You can move them around. You can add them. You can do all that. So that's cool. The other thing that you can do, you can adjust your system tray. You can adjust your taskbar. You can adjust your file explorer, your start menu, your window switcher, your weather, which mine automatically shuts off. It says don't show the weather because I don't care. And a lot of these are just set to default settings, right? And that's really it. That gives you full functionality back to Windows 10 the way that you wanted it in the first place. Now, let's say, for example, you've changed your mind. You like Windows 11 and you want to keep Windows 11 features. Well, the good news is you can just go up here, go to properties again, and you can turn things back on that you're used to seeing. 
or that you want to see, you can go up to the start menu and you can say start menu style Windows 11. You can go to taskbar and say, okay, make that Windows 11. And that will switch everything back to what you're used to seeing. Now, if you decide, you know, you really, really don't like it, you want to go back to the full Windows 11 experience, let me show you how to remove the software. So you're gonna click start, you're going to go to settings. In your settings, you're gonna to go to apps, and then in apps, you're going to see apps and features. This will give you the list of all of the apps that are on the computer. We're gonna look for the app called Explorer Patcher, and we're gonna click the three dots on the right-hand side, and we're gonna say uninstall, and it'll say this app will be uninstalled, and you say yes. It will halt your screen and say, are you sure you wanna do this? Yes, I do. And then it'll say again, are you sure you want to remove this? Yes, I do. And after it reloads Explorer, uninstall completed. Thank you for using Explorer Patcher. And there, I have my Windows 11 PC back, exactly how I'm used to it. Now it's gonna take a minute. Now you might not see all of your icons along the bottom of the browser bar, but that's okay. You can press the Windows button, reboot the computer, go to restart, and it'll all be restored to exactly what you were used to before. So I hope this video helped you out. I think that this will help a lot of Windows 11 users to bridge that gap from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And I know you may have seen my other video already where I talk about Windows 11 and if you should upgrade. My advice right now is to don't upgrade unless if you're a content consumer. If you're a content creator, i.e. you make videos such as this, you do graphic design, you use Photoshop, you use Premiere Pro, you use any kind of creator tools to make stuff, I would still just wait. If your system is working just fine the way it is, just wait. You're gonna be so much better off to wait. But if you can't wait, and if you didn't wait, then this will at least help you get back to a familiar setup that you're used to seeing. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.